January 30th, 2000, and almost Dynasty is born. The St. Louis Rams beat the Tennessee Titans 23-16 in one of the most exciting Super Bowls ever played. The Rams, a once downtrodden franchise that moved not too long ago, was on top of the world behind a shocking MVP season from their quarterback. But how did they get here? Good question. Let's go back to 1997 where the first seeds were planted. Heading into 1997, the Rams were one of the saddest teams in the entire NFL. They had gone through seven straight losing seasons and a relocation from Los Angeles to St. Louis in 1995. They traded away one of their best young players in running back Jerome Bettis, and they had gone through multiple starting quarterbacks and head coaches. In 1997, their newest solution at head coach was Dick Vermeil. Vermeil also happened to be the new solution at general manager as well taking over from Steve Ortmeier. Now, this was a man in Vermeil who hadn't coached since 1982. He did lead the Eagles to a Super Bowl appearance back in 1980, but again, he hadn't coached in 15 years. Oh, and he was quite an emotional person, too. Now, in 1997, the Rams needed a new left tackle to build around the man they thought would be their franchise quarterback, Tony Banks. They traded all the way up to number one overall in the draft, in 1997, to take Orlando Pace. Pace was one of the most dominant college linemen ever, and it seemed he was well worth the number one pick. Well, it didn't translate to wins right away, to say the least. In 1997, the Rams went 5-11 in Vermeil's first year. Tony Banks, the Rams' supposed quarterback of the future that they drafted last year, passed for just 14 touchdowns of 13 interceptions. His completion percentage was only 51.7%. They had a mediocre offense, a mediocre defense, and an eight-game losing streak in the middle of the season didn't really help matters either. In 1998, Banks was given one last chance to prove he could succeed as Rams quarterback. The Rams were certainly skeptical of Banks as they brought in arena football champ and resident grocery bagger Kurt Warner to the quarterback room. Now, Banks was on the hot seat and it certainly appeared that Vermeil was as well. Well, Banks couldn't get it done, and neither could the defense. Both the offense and defense were ranked 24th out of 30 in scoring. That was a recipe for a 4-12 season. This was the ninth straight playoffless season for the Rams, who had a 45-99 record over that span. That was the worst in the league. One would think that a 9-23 record through two seasons might have been enough to fire Vermeil. But owner Georgia Frontier, a.k.a. Madam Ram, gave him one last chance. The same could not be said for Tony Banks, however, as the Rams were ready to move on from him. They signed Trent Green during the 1999 offseason, as he proved to be a decent quarterback in Washington. But they were not done revamping the offense yet. They made a blockbuster trade for running back Marshall Falk, who was still in his prime years. And with the number 6 overall pick in the 1999 draft, they took Torrey Holt, a receiver who could complement Isaac Bruce in the passing game. So, in 1999, it all had to change. Some of the team's veteran players like defensive end Kevin Carter and receiver Isaac Bruce had to be tired of this crap. Nine straight losing seasons, that's pretty embarrassing. But what's worse than nine straight losing seasons? Ten straight losing seasons, cue the Spongebob and Patrick meme. And that's basically what appeared to have happened for the Rams before the regular season even started, as their prized quarterback acquisition in Trent Green got hurt in a meaningless preseason game. However, the Rams did seem to have confidence in their backup quarterback, Kurt Warner. Dick Vermeil, who many probably viewed as a dead man walking, about to see through another 4-12 season and then get fired, he simply said in a press conference, Kurt Warner is our quarterback. I mean, next man up, that's the mentality you gotta have in the NFL. Vermeil even said to Warner in the season before in 1998, Kurt, there's something special about you, and I can't wait to find out what it is. And that's back when he was backing up Tony Banks and Steve Bono, for crying out loud. Well, turns out Vermeil was quite right about Kurt Warner. There was something special about him. They started the year 6-0, and the offense regularly topped 30 points per game. They already hit the over on their over-under on their preseason like win-loss Vegas number of 5.5. And, and we're not even halfway through the season. Their explosiveness earned them the famous nickname, The Greatest Show on Turf because that's basically what they were. An incredible offensive spectacle. Marshall Falk, Isaac Bruce, Torrey Holt, Orlando Pace up front, and of course, league MVP Kurt Warner leading the charge. 
as these old archive things on the internet from 1999 prove, the Rams were indeed for real. They went on to finish 13-3, first playoff season for them since 1989, first division title since 1985, and the number one seed in the NFC. The explosive number one ranked scoring offense almost detracted from their number four ranked scoring defense, which gave up only 15.1 points per game. Both units completed a massive turnaround from 24th in the league last year. On that defense, corner Todd Light picked off six passes on his way to the Pro Bowl, and Kevin Carter racked up 17 sacks. In fact, that defense took home seven picks for touchdowns that season, which is the part of the reason why we see so many 30 burgers and 40 burgers on the scoreboard from the Rams this year. Now, the Rams won their divisional round game against the Vikings 49-37, to so in many ways it does seem that the Rams' offense got all the attention that year. Makes sense. Until, of course, they went to the NFC Championship, which was a completely different game. That tough Tampa Bay defense was stopping the Rams all game long, which meant the Rams' defense also had to step up. They did, and the result was a narrow 11-6 win and scorigami, a win which may or may not have been assisted by poor officiating. So that set the stage for Super Bowl 34, a game that featured the explosive Rams as 7-point favorites against the Tennessee Titans. The Titans were another once downtrodden franchise that has had a miracle 13-3 season, so both of their paths to this game were similar. One franchise would be winning their first Super Bowl tonight, which is quite an intriguing storyline. The game in the first half appeared to be pretty similar to the NFC Championship, where it was the Rams' defense coming up clutch. The Rams led 9-0 into halftime as the only scores came off of Jeff Wilkins' field goals. Finally, in the third quarter, Torrey Holt caught a touchdown pass to put the Rams up 16-0, but the Titans stormed all the way back to make it 16-16. However, the Rams' offense was given an opportunity to have a slow and methodical drive to win the game. They basically said screw that as Kurt Warner chucked up a 73-yard bomb to Isaac Bruce to make it 23-16. The Titans had 1 minute and 54 seconds left to either tie this game and send it to overtime or go home. It was truly a tense last drive. Titans quarterback Steve McNair led his troops down the field valiantly, and he used his legs well on multiple occasions. Dre Bly of the Rams helped out the Titans with a costly 15-yard face mask penalty. Eventually, the Titans had six, six seconds left, first and goal, one play to tie it up. Kevin Dyson catches the ball, and Mike Jones tackles him at the one-yard line. Tennessee came up one yard short, and the Rams were Super Bowl champions. St. Louis was a team that faced title odds similar to the expansion Browns at the beginning of the year. They went from NFL laughingstock to Super Bowl winners in a year, which is testament to how quick a turnaround in the NFL can actually happen. Now, with the Super Bowl championship, Coach Dick Vermeil could retire happy. Of course, he'd come back to coach the Chiefs a year later. But he could comfortably hand over the reins to Mike Martz, who was offensive coordinator for the greatest show on turf in 1999. They also had a new general manager in Charlie Army. The offense picked up right where it left off in 1999, getting off to a ridiculous start in 2000. They started 6-0, averaging over 43 points per game through those first six games. You heard that right. However, the offense cooled down over the last 10 games, and the defense cooled down significantly from last year. They finished the year 10-6, a mere wild card in the playoffs, and not even NFC West winners. That title went to the Saints via a tiebreaker. The big reason the Rams regressed from their Super Bowl year in 1999 was their defense. The Rams' scoring offense was still number one in the league that year, but the scoring defense? It went from fourth to dead last. So it turns out this MVP season from running back Marshall Falk was all for naught, as the Rams would lose to the Saints in the playoffs. Keep in mind that the Saints were viewed as one of the league's saddest franchises up to that point, as this was their first playoff win in their 34-year history. The Rams lost 31-28, and while the offense attempted a huge fourth quarter comeback, they came up just short. It was a sad exit for the defending champs, especially champs that started the year 6-0 with an offense that literally looked unstoppable. I should also mention that midway through the season, Trent Green had to replace an injured Kurt Warner and only went 2-3. Though we can hardly say it's his fault when your defense is dead last in the league. Any hopes of a potential Rams dynasty seemed to be ruined by that dreadful defense that couldn't keep pace with their awesome offense. But then 2001 happened and those doubts appeared to be erased. 
St. Louis knew they needed to fix that defense. By hi they hired Lovey Smith as defensive coordinator, who was the defensive coordinator for the Bucks team that nearly beat them in the 1999 NFC Championship. They loaded up on former Bucks in the offseason, like linebacker Don Davis and D lineman Chidi Ahanantu and Tayoka Jackson. Great names. The Rams also had three first round draft picks that year, all of which were spent on defense. This addition of depth and youth uh, helped the Rams' defense rebound to being seventh in the league, and their offense was top ranked for the third year in a row. This led to a 14 and 2 season, the best regular season in franchise history. They crushed the Packers in the divisional round, and although the Eagles gave them a scare in the NFC Championship game, there seemed to be little doubt. The Rams were the NFL's next dynasty. They were a big 14-point favorite against the Patriots, giving practically no respect to this New England team that seemed to come out of nowhere, kind of like the Rams did in 99. But in any case, Kurt Warner was MVP, meaning the Rams had a player win the MVP award for three straight years. Despite all these accolades, a game still had to be played. And St. Louis came out flat from the start, trailing 14-3 leading in the halftime. A pick six from Ty Law certainly didn't help there. But the Rams made it 17-17 late in the game, and it appeared we'd have the first ever Super Bowl overtime. No way was this young kid named Tom Brady going to lead the Patriots down for a game-winning field goal, with so little time left. John Madden even said this on the broadcast. Now with no timeouts, I think that the, I think that the Patriots, with this field position, you have to just run the clock out. You have to play for overtime now. I don't think you want to force anything here. You don't want to do anything stupid because you have no timeouts and you're backed up. Brady well, New England wasn't having it. A few Patriots plays drove them down the field, and then Adam Vinatieri's foot did this. Greatest kicks that I've ever seen in my life. Here comes one of greater importance if he makes it, and it's right down the pipe. A potential dynasty became an almost dynasty. Oh, and I should mention that the NFL's longest dynasty ever was actually born. But you all know that, don't you? The Rams completely fell apart the next season, going 7-9 and nine and ending just about any last hope of this team being a potential dynasty. Kurt Warner dealt with more injuries, and that led to Mark Bulger being the new starting quarterback for the Rams. Bulger managed to hold down that job, and he led the Rams to a 12-4 record in 2003 where they were the number two seed. It looked like the greatest show on turf was back in town until they were upset at home by the Panthers in the divisional round. Steve Smith caught a game-winning touchdown in double, double overtime, and that pretty much ended the Rams' era of offensive dominance from 1999 to 2003. It all seems as though there should have been more, though. A historically good offense, all-time good offense, they called them the greatest show on turf for a reason, and all they could get was a five-year stretch with two Super Bowl appearances and one Super Bowl win. Some might argue that it was actually only a three-year stretch, as the true dominance was from 1999 to 2001. But in any case, here's to the late 90s, early 2000s Rams. You were almost a dynasty.